welcome to In-Depth Sports. Every story has a beginning, and today we're going to see how the first World Series came about, how the game has changed, and the results. This is Depth. Let's go in. The first World Series started in 1903, but to start the story off, we're actually going to go back to 1876, when the National League formed with eight teams. From 1876 to 1901, the National League was the most popular baseball league in America. The National League had a championship series called the World's Championship Series. However, these series are not recognized as World Series history by the MLB. 1901 marks the birth year of the American League. There were other leagues trying to become major, but the American League succeeded. They did so by drafting good players and good contracts to compete with the National League. This brings us to the baseball war from 1901 to 1902. The American League was out to prove that it wasn't going to fall to its knees. Because of the good players and the serious competition, the National League finally gave in and the two teams merged in 1903. There were 16 teams playing then compared to the 30 teams we see playing today. Back then, leagues only played teams within their leagues during the regular season. This went all the way until 1997 when interleague play was introduced. 1903 was also the year that the foul strike rule was introduced. This rule was adopted by the American League. The regular season started on April 20th with a doubleheader against Philadelphia. The season started slow for the Americans, but by June 1st, they were first in the American League with a record of 20 wins and 15 losses. On June 9th, the Americans' 11-game win streak ends to the Detroit Tigers. This would be the longest win streak of the season. On June 16th, the Americans fall one game behind Philadelphia in the American League with a record of 28-18. On June 21st, Buck Freeman is the first player in franchise history to hit for the cycle in a road win at Cleveland. June 23rd, with a 33-20 record, the Americans take the lead in the American League and they would continue to do so for the rest of the season. July 29th, Patsy Doug Hurdy hits for the cycle visiting the New York Highlanders. This would be the highest scoring game of the season, however, the Americans lost 14-15. September 28th, the season ends with a doubleheader against the St. Louis Browns. They win both games. The score is 8-7 and 6-0. Now that we've talked about the Boston Americans regular season, let's go more in-depth on the star players of the team. Patsy Doug Hurdy had a batting average of .331, 4 home runs, and 59 RBIs. Buck Freeman had 13 home runs, 104 RBIs, and a batting average of .287. Cy Young was the best pitcher on the team, with a winning record of 28 wins to 9 losses. Cy Young later got a pitching award named after him, the Cy Young. He had an ERA of 2.08 and 176 strikeouts. Bo Deneen had a record of 21 and 13 and an ERA of 2.26 and 148 strikeouts. Tom Hugh had a record of 20 and 7, an ERA of 2.57 and 112 strikeouts. Jimmy Collins was a manager and player on the team. This was common in the early days of baseball. He had five home runs, 72 RBIs, and a batting average of 2.96. The Boston Americans ended the regular season with 91 wins, 43 losses, and 3 ties. Technically. The reason why I say technically is because back then, tie games didn't really count and it was kind of like a forfeit. Back then, there was no playoffs for the World Series. The best team from each league would get to play in the World Series. By the best team, I mean the team with the best record. The National League wanted an 11-game series, however, the American League disagreed and they settled upon a 9-game series. The 9-game series stopped in 1905 
when the seven game series was introduced. However, the nine game series would be a part of the 1919, 1920, and 1921 World Series. The first World Series was played in Huntington Avenue Baseball Ground in Boston, Massachusetts, and Expedition Park in Allegheny, Pennsylvania. Game 1, October 1st, 1903. The Pirates enter game one scoring six runs in the first four innings. In the seventh inning, Jimmy Sabrina the Pirates hits a home run, expanding the lead to 7-0. to zero. The Americans tried to come back in game one, but it was too late. The final score ended up being 7-3 to three Pirates. The Pittsburgh Pirates get the first World Series victory ever. Game two, October 2nd. The Pirates never got past first base. Bill Deneen was the pitcher for the Americans and he played a pretty good game, striking out 11 Pirates. The final score would be 3-0, Boston. Game 3, October 3rd, Deacon Phillippe was ready to play for the Pirates and after one day of rest, he did not disappoint. The Pirates end up winning Game 3, the final score is 4-2. Game 4, October 6, Deacon Phillippe was ready to play against the Americans. It was 5-1 to one at the 8th, but the Americans tried to come back again. In the 8th inning, the Americans scored 3 runs, making the final score 5-4. to four. At this point, things were looking really good for the Pirates. They were looking like they had the World Series in the bag with a 3-1 to one lead. However, this would be a major turning point in the first World Series. Game 5, October 7th. The first five innings were scoreless. Game 5 for five boring innings. The top of the six, the Americans scored six runs. Cy Young was pretty consistent striking out players until the eighth inning when the Pirates scored twice. The final score was 11-2, Boston Americans. Game 6, October 8th, Bill Deneen had a rematch between Sam Lieber. Just like in Game 2, the Americans came out with the win, and the Americans win that game with the 6-3 score. Game 7, this would be the last game played in Allegheny, Pennsylvania. Cy Young held the Pirates to just three runs, while Deacon Phillippe allowed the Americans to score seven times. The final score was 7-3, Boston Americans. Game 8, October 13th, the first three innings, nobody scored. Hope Ferris of the Americans hit a two-run single. Bill Deneen threw a complete game shutout, striking out seven Pittsburgh Pirates and leading the Boston Americans to a 3-0 victory and winning the first World Series title ever. The, the Americans came back from a 3-1 to one deficit. This has only occurred 11 times in baseball history. The, the series was 5-3 Boston Americans. Of this Boston Americans team, four of them are in the Hall of Fame. Two are in the Red Sox Hall of Fame, and that is Buck Freeman and Bill Deneen. The other two are in the National Baseball Hall of Fame. That is pitcher Cy Young and manager and third baseman Jimmy Collins. There was no championship trophy until 1967 and there was no championship ring until 1922. The Red Sox players each received a bonus of $1,182. That was a lot of money back then. There also was no World Series MVP, so I'm going to give the World Series MVP to Bill Deneen because there was multiple times in the World Series where he consistently struck out players and it seemed like they did really good when he was on the field. The Boston Red Sox did not get their name until 1908 when the league announced their, na their team color as red. If you made it this far, I would like to thank you for watching my video. I put a lot of work into these, a lot of research. A lot of other YouTubers, they have a lot of, especially sports YouTubers, they have um, top 10 
videos and if your team is just one out of the 10, then you're one out of 10 for the video. And I wanna make you 10 out of 10 and cater to you guys the best that I can. And I really appreciate all of you guys for showing up. Thank you. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.